Assalamu alaikum. My name is Ghulam Hadar and I'm going to take a closer look at hardwired control unit. First of all, what is control unit? A control unit, as the name suggests, is a component of CPU that is responsible of controlling the behavior of our CPU. In this case, the control unit controls the flow of micro instructions, which make up pretty much everything that a CPU can do. Coming on to types of control units, there are two main categories in which control units are divided. One is microprogrammed control unit and the other is of course hardwired control unit. I'm going to explain hardwired control unit in every possible detail I can, so let's just go through microprogrammed control unit first quickly. Microprogrammed control unit uses ROM or any fast storage medium to save its signal. This fast storage medium can be anything as long as it is fast enough. For example, Intel's recent architecture uses registers to store these signals. Each location within ROM has certain number of bits and each of these bits represent one discrete control signal. Therefore, if a bit is set as one in its location, it would mean that this location is generating a control signal for its respective register or memory. Microprogrammed control units are of course flexible due to microprogramming this is because if we need to change the behavior of certain instruction or extend it, we can simply play with the bits in its respective location, which is not the case in hardwired control unit. Coming on to hardwired control unit, this kind of control unit uses state diagram to generate and uh, sequenced signals. As we know, state diagram is a diagram that shows behavior of a circuit with respect to time, and this circuit usually has a clock attached to it. In hardwired control unit, signals are hard-coded. That means each instructions and signals are generated by de dedicated and or logic within the control unit. Due to this hardwiring of signals, the control unit is not very flexible, as changing an instruction behavior would require us to pretty much redesign the whole circuit. Here is the data path of simple Mary machine. As seen here, it has seven registers, one memory, and an arithmetic logic unit. Each of the registers requires two signals while PC requires one addica additional dedicated signal for its increment. This makes up a total of 17 signals inclusive of memory signals that make up um, uh, memory machine. Our control unit will be generating these signals. One more thing to notice is that this data part does not show any control signals for arithmetic logic unit which we will add in our control unit. This is the basic concept diagram that we will use to create our control unit. As seen on the top part of the diagram, a clock is giving discrete pulses to control step counter. In our case, this control step counter will generate 8 different signals which will then be utilized in generating the signals. One more thing that we can deduce from here is that our instructions can have maximum of 8 micro operations, of which 3 will be used in fetch sequence which leaves only five for the execution of instructions. Another, uh, and another thing that signals tell us here is that due to four bits coming from IR, the maximum number of instructions that we can decode is 16. The decoder is also getting external inputs in the right, that is the enable disable of decoder, usually used in cascading. There are a few, another, uh, the few, a few other inputs to decoder from the bottom right side called the condition codes. These codes are coming from status register to inform the control unit about added behavior to some instructions, such as stopping the uh, execution altogether. These are 20 signals that our control unit will generate. Each signal is the result of our operation done on all micro operations in the right side. Each of these micro operations are further result of AND operation done on the respective clock cycle along with the decoded opcode. This as a whole completes the decoding part of our uh, central processing unit. Now, before jumping right into the, in the design, let's first check out how many gates will be used in designing such control unit. Here you can see a total of 159 ICs will be used, of which 156 are logic gates, one is a decoder, other is a clock and last one is a counter. Designing such control unit would cost around 1000 rupees if we use logical switches as opcodes and LEDs as end signals for testing. Now let's put it all together. Okay, so here is the circuit that we have discussed so far. Here we have 4 bits opcode feeding into the decoder and this decoder is generating uh, 
15 different instructions as of now these are load story write add subtract multiply divide and also arithmetic instructions in uh, indirect order then we have store indirect jump and stop and this 17th instruction is still unused we can uh, make that anything next we have this one bit which is being used as enable disable for this decoder and also for this counter this counter is generating eight uh, discrete pulses based on the, uh, this clock this clock is generating three bits of sequenced signals which are decoded by this counter and we have named these signals as y0 through y7 these signals are ended with this uh, in, uh, respective instruction which is decoded from our IR and that is used to generate the respective micro instruction per signal. For example, load along with Y3 is responsible for uh, generating load 1 instru uh, micro instruction. Then we have load along with Y4 signal that generates load 2 and also load with Y3 generates load 3. Similarly, we have uh, all the 15 instructions with uh, and logic right here. For example, this is sub in indirect, subtract in indirect mode. And we are generating sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, sub 4 and sub 5. The first three clock pulses uh, in this counter are responsible for fetch cycle, which we will simulate shortly. And these uh, micro instructions from N logic are fed into these sub circuits which generate the end signal for the respective control for example mbr to bus control signal is uh, generated when any of these are uh, are set as one for example load to store to add i2 subtract i2 all these signals are ORed within this sub circuit and generate the mbr to bus signal since i did not have any uh, any or gate with custom number of inputs so i decided to make these uh, sub circuits which uh, make up the OR logic with individual OR gates, two inputs OR gates. Let's explore that. These are I guess 17 OR gates generating the final in uh, final output of uh, MBR to bus I guess. Let's see that in exit parent sheet. Yes that is generating MBR, MBR load signal. This MBR load signal then goes to these. These are logic probes which show which signal is being, uh, which signal is activated in this discrete clock pulse. Let's see which instruction do we have here. This is ninth op code that should generate uh, subtract in indirect mode, and let's see what it does and compare it with our data path right here. Let's see the first cycle. The first one says PC to bus and MAR load. For example, uh, in this data path that would say PC to bus signal number 12 is generated uh, is one. That means every content in PC is now on bus revolving around the data path. And MAR load is uh, this signal number two. That means whatever is on data path is loaded into MAR. So we are doing PC to MAR and also memory read. This signal one is giving a signal of memory read. So everything uh, at the address that MAR points to is being read from main memory and that result is stopped right here and waiting for buffer number, uh, buff uh, tri-state buffer number 10 to uh, set to one so that the result can be fed into the bus. Let's see the next micro instruction. This one says memory to bus and IR load. This signal number 10 is memory to bus which we'll write as main of MAR in uh, micro instruction and IR load. So the, uh, the main memory contents are on uh, the bus and IR load that is signal number 9 takes everything that is on bus into itself. So we are actually doing main MAR to IR that is fetch cycle number fetch instruction number 2. The next instruction is IR to bus and MAR load. Uh, whatever is on IR is sent on to the bus. That is signal number 17. And IR uh, MAR load is taking that content into itself with signal number 2. And memory read, that is signal number 1. Whatever is pointed uh, from MA, uh, MAR is read from main memory and stopped right here so that we can process that later and also PC increment since this uh, specific signal does not uh, use bus with itself so we can give that signal uh, dedicated and that is signal number four so what we are doing in this uh, micro instruction 
we are doing IR to MAR and also PC increment now let's see the next uh, the uh, the actual execution of our uh, instruction that is sub in indirect mode main MAR to MBR memory to bus that is signal number uh, 10 that is sending the contents of main MAR and the reading uh, reading of uh, memory location pointed pointed by MAR contents that content is now on this bus this is the 16 bits bus and MBR low MBR takes in those contents and stores in itself the next instruction says MBR to bus those contents are again sent on to bus and MAR load again lo uh, again loaded by MAR and memory read memory read uh, this signal number one tells that uh, whatever is on MAR should be read and uh, stored right here stopped right here next instruction says memory to bus and MAR load of course memory to bus is signal number 10 and MBR load is signal number 5 so the contents read by main memory are uh, traveling all the way from here and back to MBR that is because uh, our uh, instruction mode is indirect that is why we are doing two cycles of uh, main MAR to MBR the last uh, cycle of this instruction is ALU sub this signal is not shown right here but what this signal does is it takes one operand from accumulator and other operand from MBR and does the instruction does the operation that is right here ALU subtract so it subtracts the contents of MBR from accumulator and a AC load and sends the result back onto the bus AC load then takes that result back into AC itself so our instruction is uh, this micro instruction is doing uh, actually doing accumulator minus MBR is loaded back into accumulator next up we have ended this instruction using this data path and that was it for the simulation of uh, subtract indirect mode instruction